All right, this video is gonna be kind of short. I just wanna introduce the concept of the Shadow DOM. So we're not gonna look at any real code yet, so things might look a little little odd, but uh, but the diagrams will make a whole lot more sense when we move on to the next section and actually build up some sample applications. So again, here's our, here's our, our, our architecture. Our components are what we use, or what we write, rather, in order to interact with React, right? They're, they are how we build, hook into the React uh, library. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at this. So um, so let's look at our view. So by our view, I mean what the code that we write. So we might have a to-do application, the really boring standard um, thing you'll see for every single framework and library. Yes, we will be writing a basic to-do application here in the next section, but um, since it's so well understood, I might as well just show it to you guys. So we have... Um, uh, at the top, I have class to do application extends React dot component, but you can impl uh, imply that class and extends on all of these individual components. So, what we're looking at is one, one, two, three, four components: um, the to do application component, the add to do form component, the to do list component, and then the individual to do components. So each component is going to be a class that extends React dot component, and they're they're all responsible for a little piece of the DOM. So the way that I chose to break it up here is actually kind of arbitrary, but generally speaking, you should keep your components small, um, and that's just following you know basic object oriented design. So uh, particularly SRP, uh, the single responsibility principle, where we don't want individual things to um, uh, to do too much. So I kind of arbitrarily broken out the to-do application where it made sense. So we have our to-do application, which is the entire web page, the add to-do form, which might be a little a little box somewhere, um, just a little text box somewhere that uh, that allows us to add to-dos to our to-do list. Then our to-do list itself, which will then list, maybe in a UL or an OL element, it'll list each individual to-do. And each individual to-do might have a button for, it might show what the to-do is, and it might have a button for, um, uh, for completing it. So it's interesting when, we when we're talking about components. And again, I don't want to spend too much time in this video uh, because we're going to see practical examples here in a, the next section. But when we talk about components, it's important to understand is that we're talking about both how they physically appear on the DOM and also the logic behind um, those elements that physically appear on the DOM. So the, the idea here is that we're tightly coupling our JavaScript classes to the the dom how the dom is actually going to render uh, and that's something that a lot of people aren't very comfortable with and takes some time to get used to but i think it is beneficial to get used to thinking like that our classes closely mirror the dom in fact let's go ahead and uh and look at the shadow dom so what is the shadow dom well the shadow dom is basically the elements that the hierarchy it's a it's a hierarchy of objects that react manages and keeps track of and it contains both our own custom components as well as just normal html elements and it's important to understand that these aren't real html elements the shadow dom isn't a real dom it is just a it's kind of a um sum, not not a summary but it's kind of a um representation a model of what we eventually want to appear on the page but they're not real elements yet so the shadow dom just exists in react so when we render when we say okay to do application component go ahead and render this is what it's going to spit out so it's going to spit out this tree structure that looks again like a dom except we can see where our components begin and end so the to do application might have a div uh, with the class of site wrap uh, site wrap is the CSS class name that I always use for the top level div if I'm making a full screen application or whatever. Um, then we have the add to do form, which you see is is kind of underneath the to do application in sort of a um, conceptual way. But as you can see here, when it gets rendered, uh, the add to do form gets rendered out. And then the add to do form contains a bunch of HTML elements, as you can see. And then the to do list is a sibling of the add to do form. And it then renders out a section in a UL, but then repeats each individual to-do item. And then each individual to-do item then displays the actual to-do text as well as provide a checkbox 
before clicking. So we see we have events and all that fun stuff. Another interesting thing to note about components, which is going to become a lot more apparent in the next section, is that we are passing data down from the to-do application all the way to the individual to-dos. And we can see that because we're using these attributes here. So add to um, to-do list has an attribute called to-dos, which is data that comes from the to-do application. So the to-do list does not know anything about the model. That's really important to understand. Because if I hide this, we have the model, which um, contains, which interacts with the server and all that fun stuff. But generally speaking, we don't want the model to be directly accessible by our ch child components. So the components will receive their data from their parent eventually to the top level component, which will then decide how that data is acquired from the model. Um, we also can have events, uh, custom events, like we have right here on finish and so on. And then underneath that, um, each to-do um, component gets a reference to a to-do object from the to-dos array and then renders out. So, so far, this is just in memory. These are just objects in memory that just sit. They're just normal JSON objects. And they don't really do anything. They're just the, the Shadow DOM. But when we tell React to take the Shadow DOM and mirror the Shadow DOM onto the real DOM, this is what happens. React will merge in all of this stuff into the real DOM. And it'll, you basically can think of it as just taking out each actual HTML element and putting it in the right spot in the real DOM. All the, all, all our custom components kind of disappear from the real DOM because, well, there's no such thing as custom elements in standard HTML. Um, there will be soon though, probably. But the point is, is that React will merge the shadow DOM into the physical DOM. And so let's go ahead and take a look at what happens if something changes. So again, although I'm presenting this in HTML, uh, actually JSX, but we'll see JSX in the next section. Um, again, remember that these are just objects in memory. They don't actually physically exist on the DOM yet. So what happens if we update something? Let's say we remove one of the to-dos. So I can show you guys the change there. We remove one of the to-dos. And then React asks, uh, or React causes a re-render to happen. So then the Shadow DOM now looks like this. So all of these objects are now created again from our to-do application, our add to-do form, our to-do list, and our to-do components. They're recreated into a new Shadow DOM as fresh new JavaScript objects. This process is a lot faster than it sounds performance-wise, and we'll get to that. Then what happens is, uh, so again, just to compare the two, the difference is, is that now the, sh the new Shadow DOM doesn't have, um, what? no, stop that madness. The new Shadow DOM has one less to do. Now is the interesting part. Now is where React really comes in. And that's when the merge happens. Basically what React's gonna do is it's gonna compare the new Shadow DOM, the new set of objects, the new object hierarchy that we created through that render pass. And it's going to merge it into the physical DOM. And it's going to notice a change. It's going to notice that this li element, see how the uh, the to-do component was responsible for this li element? It's going to notice that this li element that used to exist no longer exists. And it's going to know that it needs to be deleted. So then once it merges in, it will then go delete that particular HTML element from the DOM, and it'll disappear from the web page. So we can kind of see, compare the two. In this case, this is like a first render. Right? There's, there's, there was nothing there previously, so everything is new. And then when we remove that item from the Shadow DOM, it notices that that element no longer exists, and React will intelligently remove that element from our DOM, but it won't touch any of the other elements. And that's really important. React's merging algorithm is very, very performant, where it's able to take the Shadow DOM and compare it to the physical DOM in a very, very, very fast way find the changes, and then make those changes for us. So what the consequences of this is, is that we no longer need to do document.create element all the time. We no longer need to append children. We no longer need to remove um, uh, remove child, remove element, whatever. Um, and uh, the majority of, of what we would use jQuery for no longer applies. Because React, all we have to do is tell React, hey, 
here's my shadow dom go ahead and um, update synchronize the real dom the physical dom with this new shadow dom and react will go out and make all of those dom manipulations for us in a performant way and most importantly in a very stable way where it's very often very often we make mistakes with our dom manipulation code well react removes the requirement of doing any dom manipulation now it is important to understand that while React is responsible entirely for the lifetime of every single element on our page, so if we don't have an element, well, not on our page, but wherever we have React mounted to. So if I needed a new element, I would need to go ahead and make sure that I added it into the Shadow DOM, which might seem a little limiting. Uh, some uh, certain animations or, or certain other kinds of things we might want to do would be difficult to do in this sort of paradigm because we're used to having direct access to the DOM and manipulating those elements ourselves and we have a lot more flexibility. Well, React does allow you to reach in and actually reference the elements that it creates in the physical DOM and manipulate them in ways. But once you start thinking of things in terms of React in the React sort of way, so to speak, You'll find that things that you thought were really important that you needed direct control over, you really don't need direct control over. You'll start to understand that a lot of the dom most of the DOM manipulation code that we've written in, um, you know, in our careers is pretty much redundant when we have a library like this. But anyway, yeah, that's the Shadow DOM. So we're going to see an example of how we write components. And again, what do components do? All components do is render to the Shadow DOM. All React does is takes the Shadow DOM and merges it in with the physical DOM. Well, that's not all React does, but that's a decent enough summary. So coming back to this, this is where React fits in. And um, I know that it, you know, these videos were kind of longer than I expected them to be, as they typically are. But I just kind of wanted to give you guys a, a bird's eye view and sort of an introduction to some of the terminology we're going to be using. In the next section, what we're going to do is we're going to actually dive in and write code for React. And we're going to build two really simple applications. And then finally, in the, in, the, in the final section of this course, we are going to be building a fairly, you know, large-ish for, um, for an example project, a large-ish actual real-time multiplayer game using React. And with that, I guess we will see you guys in the next section.